John, I look at the world and I'm constantly amazed that it's there. Uh, and then I say, you know, how can we get to what's fundamental, the most fundamental thing about, about our world? And the answer that comes to me from different sources often is some kind of mind. And usually it's in the form of, of, of God, but it doesn't have to be. Um, how, how do you see the, the answer to the universe, as it were, being mind? Large numbers of people have made mind basic. Uh, some of them say that the mind of God is what is behind everything. And uh, some of them, even without bringing in God, think that the universe is basically conscious throughout. And some of those think that the fact that it is conscious throughout has somehow managed to create it. There's even uh, a rather good physicist who has argued in that last way. Okay, uh, so uh, l l let's try. Uh, did I hear you correctly that there seems to be three categories of people who would say that mind is ultimate in the universe, the most fundamental thing? People who believe in God, that's obvious. People who believe in sort of a, a cosmic consciousness, maybe an Eastern religion view. And then indeed physicists who in their physics, see something of the nature of consciousness beneath their physics. Is that... Is that, is that... The, the, those are the three main okay. ways. So let's try to understand each one and how they work. Uh, give me some sense of the, of the, the, the theology, the, the, the people who believe that it's the mind of God. How, how do they imagine that mind as being responsible for the universe? Well, they typically see the mind as um, possessed of infinite power, possessed of infinite goodness, and uh, wanting to communicate its own goodness by producing other things. At the moment, I won't be discussing the pantheists who think that um, God is the universe. I'm asking what about the people who don't agree with that, but still think mind is basic to mm. the universe. And uh, some of them think that uh, God simply exists for no reason at all, but that God's existence is simpler than the existence of anything else, so that, granted, there's a universe, it's most likely it started with something simple. Uh, some of them think that there's a necessity in God's existence. This is a very theologically traditional view, but that they will tend to say that they can't explain exactly what the necessity is. And um, some of them just don't know what to think <laughs> about why God is there, whether God is there just as a matter of chance, whether there's a necessity. They're so content to be humbly agnostic on that. So even those people who say, yes, it's a god, that's the mind behind the universe, have, have this dispersion of ways when you dig deeper on how they imagine that god to be. Yes, some of them make god extremely abstract. Uh, and you end up saying such things as god is pure being. Uh, all god's qualities are one and the same as each other. It's only through our limited minds uh, that we can't recognize that God's existence is the same thing as God's power, is the same thing as God's knowledge, is the same thing as God's goodness. That would be a very abstract way of mm. looking at God. Uh, other people think, no, that's nonsense. God has all sorts of characteristics such as we would recognize in, in ideal persons but just magnified to a tremendous degree, <clears throat> tremendous goodness, tremendous knowledge, and so on. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the second category, which uh, is that, I don't know what I would say, cosmic consciousness, something that's impersonal, that's not a theistic being, but is, is consciousness, or is being in a, in a, in a, in a universal sense. Uh, Eastern religions perhaps uh, uh, exemplify this, but, but even people who are, are not members of 
of Eastern religions uh, uh, espouse this kind of non-theistic uh, mind as fundamental? Well, certainly in Eastern religions, the 14th Dalai Lama is a clear example. He teaches that in his version of Buddhism, and perhaps in Buddhism more generally, you, you, you don't have a supreme being, but you have consciousness creating the universe. There's a society of minds which together uh, imagine a world of material things. And the fact that they're all imagining the same world makes them able to live in the same world. You have, however, as you say, the physicists who find in physics particular reasons to believe in mind. And um, one recent quite major physicist is Paul Davies, who thinks that... Um, the universe is directed by mind in such a way that what happens at the start of time depends on the minds which appear later in time. He has a strange sort of causal loop going on here. Um, the later situations create the earlier ones, which then, of course, <laughs> create the later ones. N not your standard uh, view of causation. It, when you look at the view of the Dalai Lama, the consciousness is the basis of reality, that minds build up the whole of reality. It, it, this could seem a bit fantastic. It, it could seem you, something you could dismiss as, that's just religion, yeah. but how does it really work? Do these minds all telepathize with <laughs> one another in building up a common worldview? Well, I myself think there could be quite interesting arguments to give for telepathy. But it, it's um, interesting to reflect that there's a, a general philosophical reason for thinking that consciousness extends beyond our own minds. And this is that all that we discover in physics is about more and more structure in the world. But what is it which underlies the structure? It can't simply be structure, because structure is a system of relationships, and there have to be things which are related. People who have been struck by this point have said, well, the one thing which we are sure about is the existence of consciousness. Why don't we assume that it simply continues onwards, outside our own minds? This doesn't involve you in the view that um, rocks, for example, are really pretty bright, mm -hmm. or that it would be a cruel if you attack them with hammers. <laughs> but the view that everything is conscious to some slight degree was defended by, for example, Alfred North Whitehead, who had the distinction of being both a fellow of the fellow of the British Academy and a fellow of the Royal Society mm -hmm. in Britain. And it's a view which is defended by a physicist such as David Bohm, mm. who is a, a, a major quantum physicist and who has defended the view that reality is, is essentially mental. Mm. Okay, so looking at all the categories, uh, um, uh, I, I would say that of the explanations of the universe in terms of numbers of thinkers, probably the mental has, has the largest uh, uh, contingent. I, I think that's so because so many people believe in God and so many believers in God uh, say that the, the basic thing about God is that God is a divine mind. And this divine mind has the power to produce the rest of the universe. Uh, but when the majority uh, says that, uh, that doesn't necessarily convince you? I, I, I think the majority is wrong about practically everything. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on, on, on this case of whether, the, uh, whether there's a divine mind behind the universe, I, I take that very seriously. That's uh, my own position. Though... Uh, I tend to think that the divine mind is the universe. <laughs>